Hello, everyone, and welcome. For some of you who attended the Alaska Summer Travel Summit, welcome back. Uh, this can be thought of as the bonus episode or 2.0, however you'd like to think about it. My name is Valerie Stimmick. I am not in the big full screen like I was last time because we're going to just jump right in. Um, I am a travel writer. I live in California currently, but I grew up in Alaska. And on my travel blog, Valerie and Belize, I write a ton about Alaska travel, which is why I was in inspired to create the summit earlier this year. And today we are back to do a panel about Denali National Park. So if you attended the summit, you might remember there were a few technical difficulties, but we wanted to give Denali its fair due because it is the most exciting national park in Alaska. And maybe I shouldn't say that in case other national park people at other parks yep. get a little jealous, but I think you, once you see it, you'll agree with me that there's some something very, very special about Denali. So. I'm very excited to announce that we are joined by Paul Oleg. He is the Director of Interpretation and Education at Denali National Park. And he is gonna be talking to you all about the park, what there is to do, what you need to know specifically this year. And without further ado, let's just jump right in. All right, thank you, Valerie. And I'm really pleased to be here and to help everybody to uh, plan a potential trip up to Denali this summer, which is going to be a very unique experience, a little bit different than uh, what we normally uh, offer just because we are still, as we all know, very much in the midst of this pandemic. Um, but I think that it's going to provide some really exciting opportunities that are pretty unique for, especially for um, independent travelers that are coming up like all of you. And uh, so a little bit about myself and kind of my background here at Denali. Um, so I've been the director of education and interpretation here for uh, almost two years now. Um, I've worked at eight different national parks all across the country um, and have lived in Alaska on and off for about nine years. So I'm very familiar with the state. Um, and Denali is kind of the park that drew me uh, into the National Park Service. And so it was always a dream of mine to come here and finally be able to work in this amazing crown jewel place, uh, this tremendous wilderness uh, that we call Denali, Denali National Park and Preserve. Um, so go ahead and flip it to the next slide and I'll give a, a few highlights about what you can expect in Denali. What are the highlights of a visit to Denali? Um, obviously, Denali is huge. It is, we're talking about 6 million acres, uh, which is really hard to wrap your mind around. Um, and most of it is wilderness. Uh, there's a lot of proposed wilderness and we have 2 million acres of designated wilderness. Uh, which is federally protected at the highest level. Uh, and there's only one road in the park, one tiny little ribbon of gravel uh, that extends 90 miles into the park uh, to Wonder Lake and the Cantitia area. Otherwise, the rest of the park is only accessible by foot, some areas accessible by plane or helicopter. Um, and, and that's kind of how people experience the park. Uh, it, the landscape ranges from the entrance area, uh, which is uh, boreal forest, so lots of white, bar, uh, white spruce and black spruce. And then as you travel further and further into the park along the park road, you go through low elevation taiga. Um, you go through this, uh, this landscape uh, of these tiny little trees um, uh, as, as you approach tree level, which in Denali is at about 2,500 feet. Um, so anything above 2,500 feet, you aren't going to see any trees. Uh, and then you get into the high alpine tundra, which is dominated by these tiny little plants. You can see on the lower left picture people hiking through the tundra. Um, and then obviously in the Alaska range, you have Denali and the other massive glacier and ice covered peaks. Um, that include North America's tallest peak, which is Denali, of course, at 20,310 feet. Uh, an interesting little tidbit about the mountain itself is that this northern view that you see in this top photo is the tallest vertical rise from the, the ground level to the summit of any mountain in the world. Uh, so you can see more vertical elevation gain on Denali than anywhere else um, even Mount Everest, because you're starting at 17,000 feet at Mount Everest, here you're at 3,000 feet going up to 20,000. So it's really a remarkable experience. However, I do have to provide a little caveat. 
that there is a, a group of visitors that we call the 30 percenters. And uh, these are people who come to Denali uh, and hoping to see the mountain, but only 30% of all visitors ever get to see the mountain in all of its glory. Uh, so we call those the 30 percenters. So if you do come to Denali this summer, recognize that your chances of seeing the mountain looking like that is quite low. But even if that is not the case, even if that is not your view while you are here, the types of experiences that you can have, the interactions and, and the, uh, the ability to see really dramatic and phenomenal wildlife like grizzly bears, caribou, moose, uh, potentially, if you're lucky, even a wolf or a lynx, um, doll sheep, uh, those are those types of opportunities are uh, really um, un, uh, unparalleled in any other place, in especially in the United States, um, but even in the world. And the opportunities for solitude and tranquility, and to really experience wilderness in a true, per, truly personal way, is really remarkable. Uh, the best way to access the park um, beyond mile 15, which is where everybody can drive their personal vehicles to, is via the transit and tour bus system. And uh, to access that, you can make your reservations online at reservedenali.com. And uh, the, these are operated by the park concessioner uh, called the Joint Venture. And they offer tours that are more um, formally narrated experiences that can take you out to this location in the upper right hand picture. This, that's the Tundra Wilderness Tour. They do have shorter options as well that take you a little bit uh, less distance into the park. And those are driven by uh, professional naturalists and bus drivers uh, that uh, give you a full program, a full experience and a full tour, narrated tour uh, while you are there. There are a couple of places where you get to to park the they park the bus and you can hop off for a few minutes and, and walk around. But for the most part, you're looking at an experience that is contained within the bus itself. Uh, there's opportunity to see opportunities to see lots of wildlife. Um, you can have grizzlies and caribou and moose and doll sheep right next to the bus. Um, so it is a pretty remarkable experience for people to to be able to do. Um, if you are looking for something a little less formal and want an opportunity to perhaps hop off the bus and go for a hike out into the into the tundra on your own, uh, you can go on the transit tours or the transit buses, which are a little bit less expensive. Um, they go to the same places as the tour buses, uh, since it's only one road. So every all the buses go down the same road. Um, but the transit bus is less narrated. It's more uh, just kind of a shuttle into the park. Uh, the bus drivers are still very well trained in the natural history, and they will stop for wildlife uh, when it, as well as uh, good views of the mountain if the mountain happens to be out while you are on the bus. Um, so those transit buses, um, if I'm going into the park just on my own, not in my um, work capacity, I go on the transit buses because that gives me the opportunity to hop off and go for a hike. Um, we do, you can, um, anytime you are on the bus, uh, you can uh, yell to the bus driver and say, hey, I'd like to get off and go for a hike right here. And the bus driver will pull over um, at a safe spot and open the door. You can hop out and just go hiking. And then at the end of the day, or when your hike is done, just come back to the road uh, flag down the next bus and uh, they will pick you up and you can go back out to the park entrance. Um, we do recommend that anybody who is interested in doing that kind of experience uh, that you make sure to carry bear spray with you. Uh, that is very, very important um, that you familiarize yourself with bear safety as well as wilderness safety. And we have videos available on the Denali Park website, which is nps.gov slash D-E-N-A. Um, and you can watch videos on uh, what to do if you encounter a bear, what to, how to cross a glacial stream, um, how to travel across the tundra, um, what kind of maps do you need. It is a pretty amazing experience, but it is also an experience that you need to be very prepared for. 
because not only can the weather change very dramatically, very quickly, uh, and we can get snow even in July, um, but we are you are also um, crossing a true wilderness um, and sharing that landscape with moose, caribou, and grizzly bears. So it's important to know how to uh, be able to pass through that area without leaving anything but footprints, without taking anything but photographs, and doing so in a way that keeps you and the wildlife safe. Um, so that's really important. But you don't have to get off the bus. You can ride the bus all the way to the Eielson Visitor Center um, and uh, just go. There are a few designated trails out there, and you can um, hang out at the Visitor Center and enjoy that experience. Um, for those that are interested in going to Wonder Lake, the only option right now, unless you're um, booking a room at one of the backcountry lodges that are private lodges at, at Kantishna, which is beyond Wonder Lake, the only opportunity for people to see Wonder Lake this year is by camping. Um, by, cam by camping at, uh, getting a, a site at Wonder Lake Campground, um, or by um, getting a backcountry permit and going backpacking out in that area. Um, so because of COVID and because of the limited number of buses and our reduced staffing, um, that is what we are, we're not having any transit buses go out to Wonder Lake just for day tours. Uh, you will have to spend the night out there if you wanna go out there. Um, just quickly, I do see a couple of uh, que questions in the chat that I can address right now before I get into specific COVID uh, mitigations that we're doing this summer. Sure. Um, Elena, Elena um, asks, uh, it looks like they'll be going in early September. Is the park still open then? Yes. Actually, September is one of my favorite times of year to go to Denali. For a couple of reasons. Number one, most important, no mosquitoes. <laughs> the mosquitoes are all gone by then. Uh, you get uh, really nice, cool nights. Um, it can get below freezing, so make sure to dress very warm. It can be rainy, uh, can be snowy, so be prepared for that. Uh, but you actually get darkness too. So the chance to see the northern lights, the aurora borealis in September, that's some of the best time of year to see the aurora because number one, it's not 40 below while you're watching it. So it's a lot more enjoyable and it actually does get dark enough to see them. Um, so we do have the, the transit and tour buses are operating until, let me look at the calendar. Uh, the last day of the tour buses and transit buses is I believe September 16th. So up until September 16th, you can reserve one of those site seats on the buses. Um, and then uh, the that opportunity, anytime before that, uh, you can still drive to mile 15. And I'll talk a little bit more about the Teclanica road permits uh, that are offered this summer only um, that will be available until September 12th. So, uh, so Elena, that was your question. Yes, come in early September. Um, Britt, I see your question. Is it possible to do wildlife photography from the tour buses? Yes, absolutely. Um, I have uh, a Canon camera that I always take with me whenever I go on the buses. Um, the bus drivers are really good about parking the buses in such a manner that you can uh, be able to take good photographs of the wildlife through the, the bus window. You can open up the windows. It's important to stay very quiet while you're on the bus, not extend any hands or heads out the windows because it's really, really important that the wildlife don't begin to associate buses with people. So that's a really important thing. Uh, but if I've got a nice big 400 millimeter lens and I always take that with me and I've gotten some phenomenal photographs of grizzlies and caribou and moose and wolves and lynx from the bus. So it is a wonderful way uh, to do wildlife photography. I will um, jump Yes, I'll go jump ahead. in here. For those of you who've been to my blog, the Denali wildlife photos on my blog were shot from buses. I think 90% of them were. Otherwise, it was in my private vehicle when I was driving in just to Savage River and back. So yeah, it's entirely possible to get incredible wildlife photos from the buses. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. Also, bring your binoculars. Um, if you have a pair of binoculars, a lot of the times the bears and the caribou 
And especially if you're going to see a wolf, they're going to be pretty far off in the distance. And so having some binoculars is a really good way to be able to bring them right into the bus with you safely. Um, so yeah, so Britt, absolutely uh, possible to do wildlife photography. Tony has the 30% rule. He wants me to explain that once more. Uh, the 30% rule um, uh, is um, uh, related to how what percentage of park visitors actually get to see the view that you see on this photograph of the entire mountain cloud free. Um, and uh, that's a, so this is not the normal view that you will get when you come to Denali. Uh, that mountain is so big that it creates its own weather. Uh, and typically, even if it's uh, clear like this for a tiny portion of a day, it can quickly um, be entirely encased in clouds. So typically only 30% of all visitors to Denali ever see the mountain like this. So that's the 30% rule. So that's just to kind of temper your expectations. Um, Edgar says, is the park open in October or May? Uh, it is open year round. Uh, the, the amount of access that you will have into the backcountry via car um, is going to be more limited during that time or via bus. The buses are not operating in October or early May. Um, and the road may only be open a tiny portion. It's all dependent upon the road conditions, the amount of snow. We're currently working on plowing the road right now, but uh, last weekend we just got four, no, four more feet of snow. So uh, the plows are going through and trying to clear that um, and get ready for spring. But yes, October and May is a good time to visit with the caveat that it's gonna be harder to get deeper into the park. Um, so lots of other questions. Let me get to the, the COVID mitigations first, and then we can have time for more questions after that. So keep those questions coming though. So go ahead and go to the next page. Um, so yeah, I saw some questions about, you know, what is the impact of COVID on the transit and tour buses? Um, so they are operating on a limited schedule. There are far fewer buses operating, excuse me, this summer than in typical, typical summers, 60% um, of Denali's visitors uh, access the park and come to the park via the cruise industry. And with the cruise industry shut down this year, um, our concessioner just wasn't able to uh, put as many bus, hire as many bus drivers and put as many buses on the road. These buses are also still going to be filled to half capacity per COVID mitigation uh, and uh, COVID recommendations. So there will be opportunities for social distancing on the buses and uh, masks will be required at all times on the buses unless you are actively eating or drinking something. Um, so if you do get a bus ticket um, that uh, you can expect them to be filled to half capacity and you can expect to be required to wear masks at all times on the buses. Um, masks throughout the park um, are required to be worn um, in any building, there are only a couple buildings that are going to be open for people to go into for the public to enter, uh, but masks are required to be worn at all times inside uh, these federal buildings. Um, and masks are required out of doors when social, mis when social distancing cannot be maintained. So if you are hiking along one of the more popular trails and you're with your group, you don't necessarily have to have your mask on when you're with your little COVID bubble hiking on the trail. But if another group comes and approaches you and you are passing them, um, you are required to put your mask on while you are passing other groups. Or if you are in one of the visitor center areas, uh, like the Ileson Visitor Center, which is at mile 66, or the Denali Visitor Center near the park entrance, where there's more congestion um, we do ask that people wear their masks um, where it's uh, difficult to maintain that social distancing. Uh, there will be limited services available in the park this summer, so be sure to plan ahead. Um, the, we won't have any cafe in the park. Uh, there will be, uh, I, I, I am hearing from the local community that there, the businesses in the Nanana River Canyon right outside the park entrance, what we call Glitter Gulch, um, is most of those will be open this summer. So there are places to get groceries, places to get snacks, places to fill your gas tank, uh, places to get bear spray, for instance. Some of the businesses out there sell bear spray. Um, 
uh, as well as a few restaurants. And then the other option is going to be driving up to Healy for restaurants as well. So I wouldn't count on there being a lot of uh, services available. Uh, and we won't have any food service available in the park this summer. Um, the the grill is going to be closed. Valerie, you look like you wanted to say something. I do have a, qu a really quick question because I have been advising people of something and I want to make sure that I haven't been giving bad advice. Does that include the box lunch add-on for the Teclanica or the Tundra Wilderness Tour? Is that not happening this year? That is a good question. I believe that might still be happening, but the best way, yeah, I, I'm not, I, 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 I'm not quite familiar with that specific thing. Uh, but if you go to Reserve Denali, um, you, they should be able to um, mention that. I'm sure they have that in their list. If you're going to be uh, ordering a ticket for the Tundra Wilderness Tour, um, it should say on your ticket whether you should expect to bring your own food or if a box lunch will be provided as part of the tour. So Great. make sure to read your, your reservation to determine what you need to bring. Um, Thank you. And what's going to be available. Yeah, good question. Um, and then the last thing that I wanted to talk about are these Teclanica road permits. Um, this is a unique opportunity that's only going to be available this summer because of COVID um, to drive your personal vehicle beyond mile 15 of the park road as far as the Teclanica rest area, which is at mile 30. So you'll get to drive an additional 15 miles um, to the uh, Teclanica rest area in your personal vehicle. Um, and these are available. The permits cost $25. Um, that doesn't include the park entrance fee. So the park entrance fee, if you have like a senior pass or an Ant National Park pass, you can use that to cover the entrance fee. The permit itself is $25. And those permits are going to be available for almost every day of the summer between May 20th and September 12th. So this is a daily thing. Um, there's only going to be a limited number each day. So about 25 of these permits per day. So it's going, you're not going to see mobs of vehicles out there. It's just going to be 25 vehicles each day. So you'll still have that opportunity for solitude and, and the really cool experience. You will be passing buses on the road. So the buses are still going to be operating as well along this section. Um, and um, the timing of this presentation is really um uh, fortuitous because the permits go uh, are available to start reserving beginning 10 a.m. Alaska time this coming Tuesday, April 20th. So starting uh, at 10 a.m. Alaska time on April 20th, which is next Tuesday, you can go to recreation.gov and uh, reserve a Teclanica road permit to be able to drive your vehicle. Uh, to mile 30 of the park road for a particular day. It's just a day experience. Um, now these, there are vehicle limit restrictions that are similar to the restrictions that you see if you're renting, if you are taking an RV to the Teclanica campground, which you can also drive to, which is one mile prior to the um, Teclanica rest area. So this get, allows you to drive one mile farther than the Teclanica campers get to do. Um, but I think the limit is 40 feet for an RV. Um, so we, we won't allow any RVs longer than 40 feet, uh, but uh, I think that will cover the vast majority of RVs that anybody uh, is able to reserve to get out there. Um, and I, I do see one quick question. It's a super easy one. There are no bathrooms on the tour and transit buses. They are very much school bus style buses. Um, and they do, however, stop at, have restroom breaks very regularly along the tour. Um, and so there will be uh, pit toilets. We call them SSTs or sweet smelling toilets. Um, that is the technical name, by the way, of these toilets in the park is sweet smelling toilets. Um, that uh, are at some of these rest areas along the way. And you will be amazed. They are the sweetest smelling pit toilets you will ever use. So they're they're just delightful. Um, so yeah, those bathrooms and those rest areas do have those pit toilets. There is no running water out there. So bring your own, all your own water uh, and uh, any food um, and beverages that you might want to take with you along that. 
Um, so I think that covers the, the big highlights for COVID. It covers some of the big things that you're going to be able to see um, in Denali and uh, some of the expectations that you can have coming in uh, to the park. The park is not going to be as crowded this summer as it normally is because of the lack of the cruise industry uh, operating this summer. So if you want to experience Denali in a way that isn't mobbed by um, the 500,000 uh, cruise passengers that descend on the park every year, um, this is going to be the time to do it. Uh, this is going to be the summer to experience that. Uh, we are expecting more visitors than we had last year. Last year, we only had 60,000 visitors uh, come to the park. Usually, we have 600,000. Uh, we are expecting significantly more than that this summer, hopefully. Uh, we're hoping that, that visitors come back um, and come enjoy this park. But we won't be seeing the normal numbers until the cruise industry begins again. Uh, it'll you, The experience is going to be much, um, much less crowded here in Denali. Yep. So... Okay, let's jump into questions because we've got a bunch of questions from the chat and then I had some people email questions in advance. And um, just to confirm for everyone who is listening, this is going to be available as a replay. So if you only had 30 minutes and you need to log off and go take care of another responsibility, no worries. I will email everyone a link to this. And what we will do is actually, I will trim out that section where we were having some connectivity issues, just so it'll be like a really nice primo uh, stream for you. And we will get to all the questions. So I know, I believe Paul, you're available. I'm available. Mm -hmm. We'll just stay and keep answering questions until we run out of questions. Um, probably we'll stop around noon if we have still, if we still have questions after that. Um, but yeah, let's dive in. So the first one I wanna cover is uh, Leslie. And Leslie has asked, with a reduced number of buses, are they more likely to be crowded this year? So that is a great question. Um, the buses will actually not be crowded uh, because of the, uh, the additional COVID mitigation. So buses will only be filled to half capacity this summer. So normally they would be filled by, you know, 55 people per bus. Um, that means that only 24 people will be on each bus. Um, that does mean that the... Um, uh, the competition for those bus tickets might be a bit more uh, intense than we normally do, but our concession operator, our bus operator, is uh, very committed to if we see a tremendous increase in demand and a lot of people aren't able to get their bus tickets, they do have the capacity to start adding additional buses if that need arises. So, um, so it if you are experiencing that or worried about that, that is one of the things that our bus operator is, is planning to do, is have that flexibility in there. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, next up, we have a question from DD, which might be my friend Dennis that I've been emailing with a fair bit lately, I'm not sure. Uh, is the tour bus the best way to visit for first time Denali visitors? We love the outdoors and look forward to wildlife. Will it feel like a very long time on the bus? I'm gonna start, I'm actually gonna answer this one first. It is, I have never heard anybody say that they spent too long in Denali National Park, but I'll let you answer the rest, Paul. No, that, that's a perfect answer. Uh, my question or my, my answer is yes, yes, and yes. Um, it is a long bus ride. So uh, depending on how far into the bus you go, I believe that the round trip uh, transit um, uh, trip, uh, the day trip to the Isleson Visitor Center, uh, we recommend eight hours uh, for that. It's about four hours to get there, four hours to come back with some time in there to be able to hop off the bus. Um, so it will, you will be on a bus for an entire day in some of these cases. Uh, but I, I definitely encourage anybody who is a first time visitor to Denali, the bus is the best way to experience the park because you you get to see more of the park uh, than you would otherwise uh, not riding a bus. Uh, you get the wonderful bus drivers who are very familiar with the wildlife and the landscape and the stories. And so you'll get a lot of really good storytelling and information and interpretation about the park and its resources. And it's a safe way to do it. Um, if you're uncomfortable with going out backpacking in the park or hiking in grizzly country, this way you're on a bus. And uh, we've never had a grizzly climb onto a bus before. So <laughs> so you, you that's a very safe way to be able to experience potentially up close some of Denali's charismatic megafauna that we like to call them. So yes, 
uh, I would say first time visitor to Denali, grab a bus ticket. Yep, I, I concur, having done the bus tour many times. Um, okay, next let's do, we've got a couple more bus tour questions. Okay. Um, this question comes from June. Can you clarify there are only two places that stop? And I believe she's probably referring to the eight hour bus tour because I don't think there's a seven hour, but just can you give us a, yeah. a quick uh, itinerary? What's that tour look like? Absolutely. Um, so the, the tour buses and the transit buses are pretty similar, uh, but there's uh, you have more time, uh, more options to hop off. Like if you're on a transit bus, which is the shuttle option, um, yeah, when you stop, when the bus stops anywhere, the that bus that you are on is typically only going to stop for about 15 minutes uh, at the Toklat rest area, the Teklanika rest area, and the, and the Isleson Visitor Center is usually about 30 minutes for that bus. Um, but you can hop off and go for a hike and then come back and hop on another bus, uh, any other transit bus, um, as long as there's room uh, for you to do that. So that's that flexibility. And the, didn't, the main difference between the transit buses and the tour buses is that you can hop off one transit bus and then hop on another one. Um, so you're not, um, you're not uh, limited to the bus that you rode in on. Um, if you are on a tour bus, the tour buses stop at all the same places um, as the transit buses with one addition. Uh, and that is the, well, actually two. Um, there are two additional places that the the tour buses stop at, depending on the tour. Uh, the first one is at mile 14, which is Primrose Ridge, uh, which can have a really wonderful view of Denali. Um, and then that bus will then stop at the uh, Teklanika rest area for 15 minutes. Um, and that there's a nice deck platform that overlooks the Teklanika River. Great place to see wolves and caribou and grizzly bears. Um, from you know, the safety of that deck um, up on the ridge, and there's uh, the sweet smelling toilets right there. Uh, and then that the next stop for that bus will be the Toklat rest area, where again, you stop for 15 minutes um, and you are along the Toklat River up above all the trees. You don't see any trees up there. You're up in the tundra. Um, there are, again, the, the toilets are there uh, for everybody to use. We also have a uh, a park store uh, that is run by our cooperative, our nonprofit uh, partner, uh, Alaska Geographic. So you can purchase some some little uh, souvenirs, some convenience items there at the Toklat tent. Um, and then if you're on the Tundra Wilderness Tour, you continue on to the Stony Hill Overlook uh, and you have 15 minutes there. There are no restrooms at that facility or at that stop, but that is that classic view of Denali. If the mountain is out, that is going to be the most dramatic view that you will have of it. And then the, you hop back on the bus, turn back around, and again, they stop at Toklat and Teklanika, and then back at the park entrance. So that's how that's your typical tour bus itinerary. The transit buses stop at all those places except for the Stony Hill Overlook, uh, but they will then continue on to the Isleson Visitor Center. The tour buses don't go all the way to the Isleson Visitor Center. So if you want to go to Isleson, the transit bus is going to be your best option. Right. And the Tundra Wilderness Tour used to go to Isleson? I don't think so. I think they always yeah. stopped at Stony Hill. Okay. Yeah. I've somehow been to Isleson several times, but that must have been, it was years ago. So it's just well, undoubtedly. In, in non-COVID years, we there do we have go. tours that go out to Wonder Lake and Cantitiona. Right. There's a Cantitiona experience. Right. We, okay. uh, our bus operator is not providing the Cantitiona experience this year, right. unfortunately. Got it. Got it. Okay. Thank you. And I think that <laughs> covered questions. Um, Britt was asking how much time we get at each time the tour bus stops. So the average is 15 minutes, but it yep. could it could be a little longer. And that doesn't include um, the stops for wildlife, which can exactly. go yes. quite long if you got a really good shot. I mean, I remember sitting watching bears for probably 15, 20 minutes in just in the middle of nowhere in the, yep. in the wilderness. And then and, you're, and just a caveat, you're not allowed off the bus um, during these wildlife stops. So don't uh, so I don't want to have any, anybody to have an expectation that if the bus stops for a bear or a wolf or a caribou, um, you are going to be enjoying that from the, the safety of the bus. You're not allowed off of that bus yep. during that but stop. If, but if I remember correctly, and please um, correct me if not, they they do give you plenty of time for photography when yes. you do a wildlife stop. So I know, Britt, you were asking some photography questions. It's generally, you're generally not getting rushed on. I believe the only time is when, if you get several buses kind of backing up because yep. it's a really nice location and the 
the wildlife is, is just very perfectly placed just to keep the flow of people. I mean, and this is a great quick side story. When I moved to the lower 48, I was shocked at the way we manage people in parks here because in Denali, it is such a well-managed process to keep the limit of our presence there on the wilderness and the wildlife. And so um, they do a really nice job of managing the flow of people through the park, which is why I always say the buses are great to do. Mm -hmm. um, Jerry also I will has a add, Go ahead. Well, no, I just, one more thing about the buses. Uh, one thing to keep in mind for this summer, as far as ex expectations go, there are a significant number of road repair and construction projects along the park road uh, that may cause some small delays um, on some of the tour buses and transit bus routes. Um, we're working with the contractors that are doing that road construction to minimize that um, during the time that the buses are operating. So, so you'll see construction equipment out at different sections of the road, uh, but hopefully the, the impact of that is going to be just, just minimal. The nice thing is they can work at night, right? Because the sun's exactly, out Exactly, because it's daylight, yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, Jerry asked about bathrooms in the park. Um, Jerry, I will, in, in my email following up and in the description of the video when I upload the live stream, I will put in a link to the park map because it's very clear on the map uh, where the toilet options are. Um, I know they're at the visitor center and then several rest points where the bus stops because they know people need to use those facilities. I will um, also give a pitch for the brand new National Park Service app um, that you can download if you go to the App Store or uh, what I'm, a, I'm an Apple person. So I go to the App Store. I'm not sure what it is for Google um, or uh, Android. Uh, but if you go in where you download the apps, look up National Park Service and then download that. That's one app for the entire National Park Service. And the cool thing about it is that when you download it, it will point out parks that are near you. Uh, but you can also search that for parks that you're interested in planning for. Um, and our we've added a whole bunch of really amazing things to Denali's little corner of that app that includes restrooms, uh, information about hiking, information about trails, information about the buses, information about bathrooms, all that. So a really good pitch for the National Park Service app. Cool. And that sounds like that probably would be a great resource for Marty's question, which is about the best source of information about hiking in the park. Yes, absolutely. That is probably the best way to get that information or go to our website, mps.gov slash D-E-N-A. Um, and you can click, you can actually, or just Google um, hikes or trails in Denali. And our website will be the first one that pops up. That way you don't, you're not searching through the website. Uh, but if you look up uh, trails in Denali National Park, the very first thing that pops up on Google should be our official website. And you can download maps, look at where the trails go, their trail descriptions. And even on our YouTube channel, we have a few videos uh, of one of our rangers carrying a GoPro along the trail. So you can kind of get a, a little clue about what the trails look like and what that hike might look like. And so if you go to our YouTube channel, which is Denali NPS, um, you should see some of those videos as well. Awesome. I'll put the link to that in the, sh in the show notes below this video as well. Uh, I believe you covered this. Um, June asks, since you can't get off the bus, are you able to open the windows for yes. photos? Cool. Yep. Okay, that was easy. You might get um, yelled at um, if it's raining or if there are a lot of mosquitoes to close the window immediately after your picture is done. Uh, but, but yeah, you can open the windows uh, for a photo for sure. Awesome. Uh, okay, and then we're gonna jump over into some of the questions I received in advance. So Andrea asks, with the Teclanica road permits, if you're lucky enough to get one, what kind of car do you advise and can you tell us about the pullouts and areas that you can stop at? Great question. Um, the park road on this section is very well maintained um, and it is a full two lane gravel road. Um, so it's not going to, uh, impact um, any car is possible. I drive a Subaru. I've driven that section of road in my Subaru. I've seen people in pickup trucks. I've seen people in uh, Toyota Camrys. Um, pretty much if your car has wheels, uh, you can drive along this section of road. Um, and uh, yes. One quick caveat, you should check with your rental agency to confirm yes. that you're allowed to do that. <laughs> they can That's charge a you a lot point. of money if you take your car off-road and it's not allowed. So if you're planning to do this, you get a permit, just double check yep. with your agency that you're allowed to go drive into Denali. Exactly, yep. So so this, so this, the road is really, really well-maintained. 
during in that 15 mile section, we are going to have areas uh, where there are pullouts that are going to be identified with these green traffic cones. And those are places where anybody that has a Technica road permit will be able to pull over, park their car, hop out of their car, go for a hike, um, and just enjoy their time there. Um, if you encounter wildlife in that section, and we often have grizzlies in that section, lots of moose there as well, caribou very frequently on that section of road. Um, there are some uh, rules of the road videos that you can watch, and, and when you reserve the Teclanica road permit, um, we will send you links to those videos uh, for you to watch to know how to behave when wildlife approach your car, um, because there, there are specific rules that we ask everybody to follow. Um, but yes, uh, if there is not wildlife, you know, in proximity to your car, you're welcome to stop at these green cone sections, park your car, go for a hike, make sure you have your bear spray, make sure you have enough water, you're familiar with how to, to hike in Denali's wilderness. There are no trails, so you're just parking and finding a, a um, point on the landscape and hiking to it. That's, that's kind of how we do things out here, so. Okay. Then SC asks, can persons with limited mobility visit Denali? Absolutely, yes. Um, so uh, I, I would highly recommend uh, reaching out to uh, through Reserve Denali um, and uh, looking at the tour options and the, the transit options that are available for people with limited mobility. Um, many, if not most of the buses have um, uh, wheelchair lifts, have uh, our... Um, uh, handicap accessible, um, and there is so much that you can do. We have uh, ADA compliant trails in the front country uh, that people with mobility issues, uh, limited mobility, can experience. Uh, walk, you know, hiking through or experiencing some of the wonderful trails through the boreal forest. Um, so yes, I, I would strongly recommend uh, that. Uh, somebody with limited mobility will have a remarkable experience here in Denali. Yep. Uh, here's a question from Nita. And I think we'll probably do one more question after this. Uh, Nita okay. asks, what do you recommend to mitigate the mosquitoes? Patience. Pa just lots and lots of patience. Um, there, a lot of people will talk about different kinds of mosquito repellents. Um, I never really wear mosquito repellents. Um, if I'm going somewhere where there are a lot of mosquitoes, I will bring a head net and I will wear that head net and wear long sleeves. I'll often wear gloves in July uh, if it's a bad mosquito year. Um, but uh, that ten tends to be how I avoid mosquitoes, even when I'm backpacking. I, I won't spray myself down with stuff. Um, but uh, a lot of people swear by DEET. Uh, anything that has a high concentration of DEET. I know a lot of people don't like DEET because it's, uh, you know, it's a pretty potent chemical. Um, but if you do want to use a spray, what we always recommend is not spraying it on your skin, but spray it on your clothing. Like if you're wearing a hat, spray your hat and then put your hat on. Or uh, if you have a bandana around your neck or, or uh, a buff, uh, take that buff off, spray that, and then put that on. Uh, spray your shirt or your jacket, spray your socks and, and uh, your shoes. Uh, that's the best way to do that. Um, one uh, really good thing about insects and other little creepy crawlies, there are no ticks in, in Denali, so you don't have to worry about uh, getting any wood ticks, uh, which is very different from most parks in the lower 48. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, I have a very, I can't say fond, very vivid <laughs> memory of visiting Wonder Lake as a kid and uh, hopping out of the car after a very long ride and hopping right back into the car because there were a lot of mosquitoes out there that year. Yeah, I remember I went backpacking one summer and forgot my mosquito net um, and ended up having my hat with a bandana covering my face and my friend guiding me the entire way by my, uh, by my hand through the park because I could not stand all the mosquitoes oh, that were God. buzzing me. So hopefully it won't be a bad be summer. Friend. Yeah. Hopefully, because there weren't very many people last year, there won't be very many mosquitoes because they'll think yeah, there aren't enough hope. humans there. We can hope. <laughs> okay, one last question, and then we're gonna we're gonna wrap up this webinar. So Dan asks, we're gonna go a little wider now. Can you visit all four national parks by car and boat in a single trip? So let's establish which parks those are, and if you think it's possible to visit all four in a single trip. 
Okay, so I believe the 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 main parks that we usually uh, that people usually talk about are Denali, which is on the road system. Yes, you can visit that by car. Uh, Kenai Fjords National Park, uh, which is on the road system, and yes, you can visit that by car. Uh, only one tiny section of Kenai Fjords by car. Um, and then Wrangell St. Elias, which is also on the road system, and yes, you can visit that one by car as well. And they also have a road that goes into the park um, that is not limited. You can anybody can drive down that road as long as your rental agency will allow that. Uh, the other park that is often on a lot of people's itinerary is Glacier Bay. That park is only accessible by boat um, or by plane. And by boat, I mean ship, um, not like a little puddle, not like a little uh, uh, motorboat. Uh, it's it's way out there um, and a long ship journey to get to Glacier Bay. Um, so the other parks that we have, like Lake Clark, Katmai, uh, Gates of the Arctic, all of those um, are only accessible via plane. Uh, typically um, via airplane. Um, and uh, But yes, you could visit uh, Kenai Fjords, Denali, and Wrangell St. Elias in a single trip. You will be spending a lot of time on the road to do that. Uh, from If you were to drive from the entrance of Denali National Park down to Seward, Alaska, where Kenai Fjords is, that's a six-hour one-way drive on a good day. Um, and then from Kenai Fjords to get to uh, Wrangell St. Elias, you're looking at about another six to nine hours of driving to get there. And then from Wrangell St. Elias to Denali, depending on which way you go around the Alaska range, it's another six to nine hours. So um, if your single trip is two, three, four weeks long, yeah, it, it's super easy to do that. You'll spend a couple, you know, like five or six days of just driving on the road. Um, but if you're only here for like four or five days, what I would do is pick one or two of those parks, focus on those, really just enjoy your time in those parks. Um, I used to work at Kenai Fjords National Park, uh, which is a wonderful place, very different from Denali. Um, and I've done a lot of backpacking in Wrangell St. Elias, which is a much less developed place much less developed than Denali or Kenai Fjords. And so that's more, much more of a wilderness kind of find your own adventure, choose your own adventure type of park than it is uh, at Denali or Kenai Fjords, which tends to be a little bit more um, organized tours that, that go and experience those. So hopefully that answers that question as well. Perfect, it does, thank you. Okay, and with that, we're gonna wrap it up. We have gone almost an hour. I wanna thank you so much, Paul, for joining, uh, making time Absolutely. in your schedule. And thank you everybody who was able to attend. As I said, I will get a replay of this video up on YouTube. I will email it to everyone. And uh, hopefully you can get your spot on a Tundra Wilderness Tour or maybe one of those Technonica Road permits this year. If you have any questions, you can drop them on the YouTube video or you can email me. And again, just wanna say thanks so much and have a wonderful day. Thanks everybody. Thanks Valerie.